Hi everyone, good evening. Uh, welcome to F5 uh, practice to pass session with uh, me. Uh, I think everyone should be able to uh, see uh, the slides that I'm uh, displaying. Uh, so just to keep you informed uh, briefly, I'm Shehan Fernando. I'm uh, representing Mercury Institute from Sri Lanka. So uh, I've been uh, teaching for more than 12 years, uh, especially this subject called uh, management accounting or performance management uh, in the curriculum F5. Okay. So just to give you a brief idea as to how the session will uh, function, as you can see, day one, uh, I'm going to give start off with a bit of an introduction and some tips. And uh, I'm going according to uh, syllabus areas. Uh, and we are starting off with the last section, which I feel is the most important section as well. OK, that's performance measurement and control. So tomorrow we're going to look at budgeting and control and uh, decision making techniques on day three. That's a big section. So ideally, if we uh, finish uh, what we are supposed to do today, maybe uh, let's see if how time permits, we might start off something from budgets. OK, and on the last day, that's, of course, a very small area. So in which case, maybe if we are unable to finish decision making, we'll carry it on to day four. Uh, cost accounting techniques on day four and uh, ending tips and questions. OK. Housekeeping tips. OK. So then this goes this way. Uh, do we have a clearer view on the screen, everyone, now? OK. Right. So uh, right. So uh, just to tell you a few things on the software that you are using, OK, as you can see on the right side, right at the bottom, OK, uh, there's a day one and day two. There's a PowerPoint and a, a, a PDF file, OK? So the PDF file will have some questions that we will go through and the PowerPoint is the PowerPoint that I'm following just in case uh, you can have it for reference. OK, uh, there's uh, two uh, tabs called polls and questions. OK, uh, for easy purpose, appreciate if you keep out of that and uh, type whatever that you have to type uh, on the chat itself, maybe a question maybe uh, anything else that you want to ask in the in the case of polls i'm going to ask some mcq questions and i'll tell you how that works when we move on to uh, that particular question okay right and uh, what i want you guys to do is have these uh, documents uh, open with you just in case you will need it okay and uh, have maybe a blank word document as well okay so just in case uh, when I note down something, uh, if you want to copy it, do a screenshot of it and go to Word and paste it or something like that. OK, and uh, we will need to access the constructed response workspace. OK, so uh, we will uh, access it when I come to that particular point to answer the questions. OK, so you need to have uh, that ready as well, a web browser maybe. OK. Right. So those are a few things uh, that uh, you need to know. OK. Yeah. So let's move on to the lesson itself. OK. Right. Uh, everyone comfortable with this, I believe. OK. The plan. OK. So I'm moving on the paper structure. OK. So all of you all should know this. OK. Section A 15 multiple choice questions, two marks each. As you can see, it's the entire syllabus that we are trying to cover through section A, question wise. Uh, section B, three questions comprised of five multiple choice questions. That again is the whole syllabus. Okay. Either from section A or section B, you're going to have some uh, seeded questions. Okay. Uh, that is five seeded questions, just in case you're wondering what seeded questions are. 
it's basically uh, five questions where you will not be marked for uh, basically quality assurance purposes etc okay uh, but you will have to answer those five questions as well okay and then we have uh, two 20 mark questions okay uh, one question coming from performance measurement and control and the second question coming in from decision making techniques budgeting and control okay uh, one may ask me uh, i'm not a person who spots questions but performance measurement and control if one asks me uh, are you certain that this will come for the exam uh, based on every past paper okay yes i believe it will come for the exam so every past paper has tested something from performance measurement and control for as a big question so i believe that will come uh, this time as well I, I i don't think a pattern of uh, 40 plus past papers will suddenly change in this session so one question will come from performance measurement and control and that's all the more reason why today is the most important day because i'm going to cover that section today so the second question comes from decision making techniques budgeting and control uh, i believe you're aware of the subtopics just in case i'll throw that right now we have pricing we have make or buy and relevant costing we have risk and uncertainty we have break even analysis and linear programming that's five topics there that's why i said it's a big chunk on the third day budgeting and control can come in the form of a theoretical question uh, a rare calculation question connected to something like a flexible budget which has been tested very long time ago okay and uh, probably a learning curve which is more of a bit of a popular thing right so i think uh, most of you all, uh, I, I think almost everyone's going to do the exam on the computer based platform. Okay. So we need to be familiar with that platform as well. That's why I wanted you guys uh, to have the web browser open. So we will log into that platform as well. Okay. Uh, directly, let's log in when doing a question. So I'm not going to waste time trying to show you the platform. Maybe when we do the question, let's uh, practice uh, it, look at it a little bit just in case you don't know. Right, so I've gone through as a tutor, I've gone through all uh, examiner's reports, okay? So as you can see over here, it's based on examiner's reports, okay? So why do students fail, okay? So maybe you who have logged in today is someone who has a, a reset, uh, who, who is uh, attempting a reset, okay? Uh, just a second. Uh, Yeah, I have a few individuals who have your hands raised, okay, and uh, yeah, so let's I'll, I'll quickly look at this, okay. Uh, hi to Abdullah Naim, and uh, there's a request to sh uh, kindly sir for start. First of all, should start on uh, ratios, I believe. Yes, yes, uh, I'll do that. And I need more questions for practice of MCQs and MTQs. Kindly give me practice material for this guide. Okay, fine. Uh, anyway, I'm planning to hand over something for you guys to practice at home. Okay, at the end of the whole session. Okay. Uh, right. So questions, uh, I believe uh, if it's connected to this, uh, you can uh, ask me. Okay. Uh, if it's connected to what I'm teaching, uh, section C questions, I believe section C from the syllabus i guess so in which case uh, we will uh, look at it tomorrow that's when we are covering uh, volume is low okay is everyone uh, finding the volume to be low or can you all hear me i did a test run it was quite okay anyway so as i said so keep uh, the questions coming in but uh, appreciate if you can connect it to uh, this section of the syllabus and as i said i will throw some questions so don't worry too much about it okay right uh, fine so we move on okay so why do students fail okay so it may be your first time uh, it may be uh, a reset 
okay uh, vice is okay thank you right uh, it may be a reset but ideally uh, this is what the examiner points out mainly the first two points okay so lack of knowledge uh, improper exam techniques including not being familiar with the new cbe environment okay so what do you do in terms of lack of knowledge uh, you study guys you have to study you have to remember stuff okay and uh, you have to practice questions okay you have to know what they are asking for example if it's an abc question to do the answer you need to know the steps simple as that okay so knowing is knowledge okay so lack of knowledge okay so you need to study guys improper exam techniques are uh, basically today i'll pass on knowledge as well I, I, i'll be discussing some of the syllabus areas and improper exam technique uh, I'll, I'll point out certain things which students do as mistakes okay this is directly from the examiner itself okay uh, not reading the requirement carefully okay so this is something that i have gathered of course the examiner also has mentioned this i'm not saying no okay uh, he mainly focuses on these two points but I, I i say this is also a bit of a thing important thing because obviously if you don't read it clearly that means you are not going to answer what they are asking you're going to lose marks for sure time management issues okay so time management issues that also we have so uh you know it's a 180 minute paper to do 100 marks but there's a small adjustment now with the seeded questions you get 20 minutes extra for 10 extra marks so it's a 200 minute paper for 110 marks so roughly 101.8 minutes per mark okay right let's see there's a question here is costing techniques can come in section c costing techniques uh, manur uh, cannot come in section c this is not me saying this this is the examiner saying this in the syllabus outline itself so you will not get ABC uh, life cycle costing, target costing, uh, environmental accounting, maybe a little bit of marginal absorption which you need for ABC, three area of constraints, throughput accounting. That's not going to come for section C. Okay, this is the examiner stating this in the syllabus document. So that's why I said your section C will be ideally performance measurement and control and decision making techniques budgeting yeah so then time management issues guys if you are slow in typing you need to do something and work on it a little bit at least okay you need to be a little fast okay uh, I, I, i'm not too sure if this is the ideal time to train on your typing because this is the time you need to sit down and study ideally okay and prepare for the exam with question practice etc but I would say do the question practice on the platform itself to make yourselves comfortable. So that's a little bit of initial advice. Okay. So now we know why people mess it up. Okay. So let's let's take some active effort to make sure that you don't mess up. Simple as that. Okay. Right. Uh, there's a question is section c is more examinable or important uh rohit i'm not uh, getting your question clearly are you referring to section c of your syllabus okay there is not so much platforms available for practicing the cbe cr questions okay uh the, the, there is okay uh uh, Muzamil, uh, to answer your questions, you will have only one platform. You won't have a lot of platforms. I'll show you what that platform is. Uh, I believe your question is there's not many questions. Okay. See, as a tutor, what I tell my students is if you don't have any questions, okay, uh, guys, uh, so there are some individuals who's raising hands. Okay. Uh, I'm not too sure why you guys are raising your hands. If there's a question, you can directly pop it okay over there or maybe uh, that is because uh, someone's joining in additionally i guess okay uh yeah so there's uh, how do we overcome this 
I will be resetting. Yeah. Okay. So I'll 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 uh, I'll I'll show you the platform. I'll show you the platform. I'll do a question on the platform. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, I will discuss the techniques too. Okay. Don't worry about that as well. Uh, is this this uh, this presentation? If you are doing a paper based exam, it is still relevant. But the only difference is you will not answer through the platform. You will answer on a piece of paper. Okay. So if you are a paper based student. Uh, there is no reason for you to uh, go out of this uh, system. Please be, uh, be with us, okay, uh, for the whole four days. I'm saying it's important to uh, balance with Rohit. Uh, Rohit asked me a question before. Rohit, uh, is Section C more examinable or important? Uh, it's, it's equally important. It's equally important, okay? Yes, I'll show you how to put the workings down. Okay, this is a undisclosed name. We have, a, a, yes, you need to show the workings on section C. Okay, yes, every majority are uh, waiting for the CB platform. Just bear with me for five minutes. I'll get there very soon because my first question has to do something with that itself. Okay, right. Okay, fine. Now uh, we move on to the system itself. Okay. Right, or the syllabus itself, performance measurement and control. So ratio analysis, balance scorecard, building block model, ROI, RI, transfer pricing. Uh, there's a space, I've kept a space there, I'll tell you why. Not for profit organizations, information system. So as I told you before, one out of all of these, one, one question from these sections, uh, one of these topics will definitely come for 20 marks, okay? But it can be a combination as well. So it can be a ratio analysis question. It can be a balance scorecard. It can be a building block model. Not many questions on the building block model. Don't worry, I'll share something with you all before the whole session ends. ROI, RI, uh, transfer pricing, okay? Sometimes both all bo these can get combined as one question that is ROI, RI, and transfer pricing. And then uh, not-for-profit organizations, information systems, okay? All right. So as someone who has been doing this for so long and going through all the past papers, I am telling you guys this one, okay, let, let me get that. That one, one, two, three, four. One of these things will come for 20 marks, okay? If the balance scorecard doesn't come, the building block will come, okay? One of these four, I'm not saying everything, sometimes they tend to combine these two as one question as well okay uh, this is also a part of section c sorry section uh, d of your syllabus this is also part of section d of your syllabus but until to date nothing has appeared in terms of a past paper sorry in terms of a 20 mark question maybe if it comes if it comes uh, then uh, circumstances will be such that it will probably be a piece of the 20 marks not a whole 20 mark question that is the last two i'm talking about but we have 20 marks from ratios 20 marks from balance scorecard 20 marks from roi ri transfer pricing okay so i'm gonna try one of each all on the platform so those who are anxiously awaiting about the platform don't worry okay you're in safe hands we're gonna try questions okay right so quickly brushing through the ratios, okay, so you have access to this, you know what the ratios are, ROC, how it's computed, gross profit, net profit, asset turnover, ROCE. A special focus on this ratio, my dear students, okay, I'm talking about the ROCE, asset turnover, net profit margin, or ideally, uh, it, it's more on an operating profit margin rather than a net profit margin. So what happens is, uh, this uh, operating profit margin and uh, uh, which is also used in the asset turnover okay so uh, sort of gets cancelled off okay sorry the the sales value hold on hold on roc yeah so the operating profit margin has operating profit over sales so that sales will get cancelled with this sale so it's operating profit over capital employed this is the formula i'm talking about so ideally, the multiplication of these two uh, will give you ROCE because there have been certain questions where they asked about this and uh, you had to probably uh, 
answer with the breakup of the ROC as it as a turnover and the net margin. Okay, right. So let me erase this and move on. Okay. Right. So I come back to our next set of ratios. There's a question. Let me quickly look at that. Okay. Uh, uh, you just joined. Uh, okay. Uh, you haven't missed much. Okay. I just gave an introduction to the subject. So don't worry. Okay. Right. So uh, current ratio, current assets, current liabilities, quick ratio, quick assets. I've given you quick assets formula. Receivable days, payable days, inventory days. Same thing upside down without the 365 is receivables turnover, payables turnover, and inventory turnover. So then we have the risk related ratios, okay, that is financial gearing, some divided by equity, some divided by debt plus equity. Uh, up to you to pick whatever, but as long as you maintain uniformity, dividend cover, and interest cover, okay. Right, so those are the ratios. Uh, shall we look at a question? Thatcher International Park, okay? So what I want you to do is now, I told you to open the uh, open the web browser. So as you can see, I will say ACCA F5 on Google, okay? I want you to do this with me. Appreciate if you also can do this fast because we have a limited time, guys, everyone. So performance management. Click on the first link, okay? And then go to CBE specimens, okay? Right. So there's a full specimen exam. We'll click on that. This may take a little time. So click on next about three times. And finally, a yes. Okay. Right, so then I click on next. So this is how your exam is going to be. So those who are doing uh, CBE exams, as you all, uh, uh, as you all said, okay, uh, you wanted to try this out. Okay, so this is how it's going to be. And uh, so if I click on next, we see our first question. Okay, so we're not going to go into the question in detail. Okay, right now. Okay, because I'm going to cover areas and, and uh, yeah. These questions actually they are in my uh, handout as well so so let me move on yeah so it's like this and uh, how do you move on from question to question clicking next but isn't there like a list or something like that of course there is click on this navigator button okay so up to 15 it's section a as you can see after that it's section b let's quickly touch on something from section b so that you can see it, okay? So section B, as you can see, uh, we're gonna do this question as well. This is a very nice question, okay? So as you can see on the left-hand side of your screen, you have the question, okay, from which they are asking you, sorry, the, 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 uh, the I would say the data for the question. And on the right-hand side, we have a question which requires uh, the information over here. We need to use that to answer this particular question, okay? And when I go to the next question, you will see the data set remains the same. And the question changes. So we have the, this is uh, the MTQs basically, five questions coming from the same data set. Okay, right. And then, so you have 15 questions like that, three sets, and then we move on to question number 31, section C. Okay, right. All right, so, this is a variance question which I will be covering tomorrow, okay? So ideally you have the question on this side and this is where you have to answer for which you get four marks, two marks and five marks, okay? 
sometimes they will give you an excel screen which means obviously they are asking you to calculate something sometimes they'll give you a word screen where the main requirement would be to type in an answer but sometimes you have to do calculations as well okay so i'll show you what you mean through the next question itself okay if i'm to browse through the tools okay i'm not going to waste time don't ever touch this button okay uh, while you are typing and if the answer is done okay it sort of clears off everything okay but then again they give you a pre-warning to do that okay so keep this aside these edit and format don't worry too much about those two those two tabs as well because most of the stuff in those two tabs or most those two drop down menus are here so you have the cut the copy and the paste the format paint the undo redo the the uh, the screen sizing etc uh it's not the most comfortable sizing don't complain guys this is what we have okay we have to get used to it okay uh and then uh it's not uh, you can't go to 110 or something like that okay so uh bold italics underline change the font color highlight okay uh left indent center right and then uh, the decimal places so then we have the currency then we have a uh, time then we have fractions percentages don't worry too much about anything uh, i i believe only needed uh, options here is basically the decimal sign sometimes when the decimals appear unnecessarily and maybe a percentage sign rarely okay right so that is how you should answer this particular question let me move on to the next one like what i told you okay yeah so there you are so now we have to answer on this okay so explain so paragraph required so i'm not going to do this i'm going to directly go into thatcher international park this this can be a little annoying sometimes but obviously it won't be the case because you will be reading the whole thing uh, at the exam okay so if you don't go down like this okay they don't allow you to move on to the next screen but that's a good thing also so because uh, you're never gonna miss out on anything if that happens okay right so the specimen paper thatcher international park it says this is the question that we are trying to do now okay right uh just a second there's a question let's see what this is right uh right what does this say it says something like this right wait a minute how do we answer if our presentation isn't right for cr questions like this if someone isn't an expert in excel then is it okay to answer in a rough manner in the excel sheet please clear this okay um okay so if you are not an expert on excel and word it's like this guys okay the advice given to me uh by officials from acca who we are constantly in touch with okay i believe uh, that the same advice i will give you if it was a paper-based exam i don't think anyone can complain over the fact that we are unfamiliar with paper-based exams so everyone's fine with paper-based exams so if it was a paper-based exam, what will you put down? Please put down the same thing on the platform. So if you're writing a paragraph on a paper exam, please put that paragraph on Word. If you are doing a calculation on the paper-based exam, please do that calculation on Excel. But the only thing with Excel is you don't have to separately show the workings. You can go with the equal sign and do the calculation and the answer will appear don't worry the person correcting your paper has access to uh, basically the workings by double -click clicking the excel uh, uh, cell okay right so that's fine right so let's look at this question and let's answer on this itself okay uh, i believe everyone's ready okay right so thatcher international by the way if you think this space is not sufficient meaning like i would like a bigger area this uh, pane is a little movable okay but obviously then the question gets messed up okay 
So if you are comfortable with the question, thinking that uh, the sort of in your head or something like that, okay, it's uh, okay for you to minimize that, right? Thatcher International Park is a theme park and has for many years been a successful business which has traded profitably about uh, three years ago. The directors decided to capitalize on their success and uh, reduce the expenditure. Uh, maybe if you like, I can highlight certain things. Okay. Yeah. So we have a, yeah. Let me get something. Okay. Yeah. So for many years, it has been a successful business traded profitably. Okay. Uh, reduce expenditure on, uh, reduce the expenditure on many thrill rides. Okay. Reduce routine maintenance. Doesn't sound good. Okay. But let's see, will you, what they're trying to do? They are possible uh, and deciding instead to repair equipment when it broke down. Okay. So ideally when the rides break, you repair. Uh, if not, you don't. Okay. Uh, you think it's perfectly fine. Okay. You're taking a big risk guys by doing that. Because the reputation of a theme park can be very important and made a commitment to regularly, regularly increase admission prices. Once an admission price is paid, customers can use any of the facilities and rides for free. So it's an all in one ticket. These steps increase profitably uh, profits considerably, enabling good dividends to be paid to the owners and the businesses and the bonuses to the directors the last so ideally okay so they've got good dividends to owners and bonuses to the directors so the profits have gone up as well okay so like it or not it has worked okay but uh, we are talking about sustainability okay so i'm not too sure if it's sustainable though so they are giving you sales figures over here i'm sorry can't move it like that okay so let me uh Wait. So let me cut that off. Yeah. So ideally, yeah, there's a small problem with this. So anyway, I'll be going back up. Sales, wages, maintenance, uh, repairs, uh, director's salaries, director's bonuses. So what has happened to sales? Sales has gone up. Wages have come down. Seems a big jump. Maintenance has come down. Repairs have gone up. Director salaries have gone up, bonuses have gone up. Oh, they are filling their pockets. Yeah, uh, other costs have gone down. Okay, net profits have gone up. Okay, big increase. Okay, book value of the assets. There is a there is a drop. Okay, so if the book value goes down, your uh, returns on investments or returns on assets will go up. Dividends paid is up. Number of visitors down. That's not a good sign. Okay. Uh, TIP operates in a country where the average rate of inflation is 1%. Okay. So your ticket prices are up. And at the same time, uh, I must just see uh, to what extent it has gone up. So ideally, it's correct for us to say it has to be in line with inflation. Okay. So uh, if it's like massively above inflation, I don't think that's a good thing to uh, do. Okay. Right. Anyway, so let me erase this and let me move on to uh, the second piece as well. The second question. Okay. So this was assess the financial performance. And the second part, as you can see, as an extra piece of uh, material there. Okay. Let me go up. Yeah, during the early part of 20X4, TIP employed a new qualified management accountant. He quickly became concerned about the potential performance of TIP and to investigate his concerns. He started to gather data to measure some non-financial measures of success. The data he has gathered is shown below. Hours lost due to breakdowns, massive increase. So we have a problem there. Average waiting time per ride, that also has gone up. TIP has 50 rides of different types. It is open 360 days of the year for 10 hours each day. Okay. Assess the quality for six marks. Huh? Assess the quality of the service which TIP provides to its customers. 
using table one so that is uh, the this information given over here and any other relevant data and indicate the risks it is likely to face if it continues with the current policies okay so so 14 marks for assessing the financial performance six marks for coming up with an answer connected to quality and i'm supposed to do this in this pane the 14 marks on the previous pane but anyway i'll do that over here as well okay so uh, let's start off over here but before i start off there is a question uh, right the question is how do we find this live pane on the acca web portal so maybe uh, someone who just logged in okay so what you have to do is quickly i'll tell it uh, this is not that student might be a little lost so go to acca f5 on google just search on that and then uh, your first search result click uh, click on specimen exam cb specimen exams and click on this full specimen exam okay right so this is your answering pane back again so this is the exact same thing you will get at the exam also right and uh, by the way so you have uh, again the reset button don't touch it the cut copy paste undo redo find and replace okay uh, by the way you can't copy from the question and paste it over here the system doesn't allow you to do anything like that for example let's say i want this copied okay i don't think it will work yeah there you go it doesn't work okay but if you want to do something like this, it's perfectly fine. Uh, what am I talking about? Let's say type something, okay? And copy that. And then you want to paste it. That's okay. That's allowed, okay? So don't you can't copy from the uh, question to the answer, okay? Right. -o. So then bold italics underline. There's a strike through. Subscript, superscript, clear formatting this i need i need right now okay uh, before that increasing decreasing indent bullets uh, numbering then uh, justify a line right left center okay right so uh, the table i need so how would you do an answer connected to this particular question okay keep uh, everything pause for the moment okay there's a question uh, uh, there is a sound problem okay uh i think it's all okay rohit uh I'm, i haven't got any other complaints okay there is a sound problem with was it you who mentioned yeah no someone else okay uh voice is okay right thanks ali okay right we move on uh so coming back to our powerpoint a little bit okay i want to stress on this now the next slide okay right from the examiner's report okay so i'll read this so that you will understand how to answer and then we'll move into the answer the most common reason candidates do not score top marks on these questions is the lack of depth to their answers when asked the question comment on the performance of so now it's something like assess the financial performance so similar question we are trying okay you should be looking to give more than uh, this is good or this is worse than last year to really score well on these questions you should try to look for reasons why the top performance is good or bad use the information given in the scenario to explain the numbers okay so we highlighted certain things, the rides not being uh, serviced. Uh, we will only repair if it breaks. So you have to pull out those from the question and relate it when you're answering, okay? So it's like this, okay? And uh, Shehan says this as well, avoid general comments, okay? Unless uh, any reason cannot be found, okay? So now, don't say sales has gone up because probably competitor left the industry yes that can happen okay but we don't know the question doesn't say anything like that okay so if you have nothing which comes to mind okay maybe i will allow you to write that i'm not saying no 
but please always use the words possibly because maybe due to don't give a committed answer saying okay this is definitely because the competitor left the industry that's why our sales is growing okay so don't give general comments unless you cannot see a clear reason behind it if you are clueless okay if nothing can be mentioned as to why what happened etc okay just like in some of the examiner's answers don't hesitate to say that there is insufficient information and further information is needed for us to investigate further something like that can be mentioned don't worry but don't take this to your advantage and write that for every possible thing especially when information is available so you're losing marks okay right so uh yeah so this is something that i wanted you to see okay so on that regard okay so there's a question uh yeah so the voice is completely fine yeah thanks for the replies guys okay uh fine so we move on to our platform okay right so this is what i will advise you guys to do okay uh, let me write that on the platform and maybe i'll erase it in a little bit okay right so in a question like this okay we will have to calculate first of all so do the computations so then you comment so what do you mean by comment yes i calculated my net profit margin and i will say yes my net profit has gone up by so much from this year to this year but you must understand that's not going to give you any marks because if you calculated it the examiner can see obviously it has gone up or come down this is a someone who is qualified in uh, management accounting no that's why that person has been selected as an examiner so you don't have to specifically say that it has gone up or come down but obviously you must do that to start off your answer although it's not adding value too much okay the thing that adds value is okay the discussion part like what you saw in the examiner's comment discussing tell me why it has gone up or come down if you can't tell me why it has gone up or come down i'm not going to give you marks most of the students will do this most of the students will do this most of the students will avoid doing this so if they avoid doing this they are going to lose a major share of the marks okay so keep in mind okay question like this calculate comment discuss what do you mean by discuss tell me why i it has gone up or come down okay and as i said try to find an answer from the body of the question itself okay right one second i do so we move on okay so how do we do this how do we do this okay shehan proposes something like this okay first of all guys okay uh insert a table okay so the first heading is going to be the ratio or if you like you can say number one the like a series or something like that then the second uh, is the ratio then uh, a formula and finally uh, the computation so if you're planning to compute about 10 or something like that drag it up to 10 okay uh and uh, if you think this is not enough yeah so start off with another table no one's going to complain okay so let's have something like that okay where you go okay right so these uh pains can be adjusted i believe okay i'm not too sure yeah so even if it's not adjustable uh don't to don't worry too much okay uh, it automatically gets adjusted so this is uh my ratio number one that i'm going to compute so this is ratio number two that i'm going to compute three that i'm going to compute so i have a heading there ratio so i have a heading there the formula have a heading there the computation
right so they as you as you can see uh, it's like they can read our minds automatically the size of the table adjusts as well okay right so the first ratio that i will compute okay is uh, probably uh, let's say something like the average ticket price okay so how do you compute the ticket price tell the examiner that is sales revenue divided by uh, according to this the number of visitors okay so ideally since we might need this twice okay for Why are you trying to compute the same thing twice? Simple, because I'm going to compute for 20x4. And I'm going to compute for 20x5. So the same formula, I don't think that's need necessary to be typed. So let's type the formula. So the 20x4 sales revenue, as you can see over here, is 5.25 million thirty five per person. Okay. So same thing for the next year. Five point three two million five three two one two three four zeros divided by hundred and forty thousand that's equal to 38 okay so this is how i would advise you to fill this table so now as you can see this is not average ticket price was never there in our powerpoint ratio list okay so we didn't have a, like average ticket price so you must understand that is something connected to this particular question so you can do your general workings as well for example a net profit margin for 20x4 and 20x5 so okay let's do that as well net profit margin okay uh, for 20x4 and don't waste time okay copy it control c control v okay make the x4 x5 okay so excel actually has its uh, benefits as well since we are computing it together let's mark it as number two one may ask uh, sir why one why why or number two uh, simple when you're typing your paragraph you can say within brackets working one working two or something like that so the examiner can always look up okay and see the working okay so if you want you can put a w there to just to say it's working one working two so net profit margin how do we compute that that's net profit uh, into 100 uh, percent divided by sales okay so that's your formula over there so if i am to do this for 20x4 net profit margin uh, that is there are questions i'll come back to that one twenty one zero four five one two three zeros divided by 5250 123 into 100% okay and that is equated to your net profit uh, if i do a calculation uh one second uh one may ask uh, so how do you do the calculations i'm sorry guys you have to use your calculator okay so if it was Excel, then Excel will help me to do this. But unfortunately, as you can see, this is what they have given to me. So do not complain. Do not complain, please. OK, uh, go ahead with what's given. OK, right. So there you go. 19.9 percent. So if you feel like entering yeah, I think that's more nicer. So same thing applies over here as well. Let me do that one last formula. So that is what one three seven two one two three okay divided by five three twenty one two three into one hundred percent and i will say enter equal sign so let's do the computation that is one three seven two divided by 
uh, 5320 that's 25.79% that's how it's done okay so you have to fill in this table with obviously a few more uh, calculations which you can do obviously the sales growth is one then we have uh, uh, probably the director's salary increase the bonus increase the drop in the wages the drop in the number of customers as a percentage the drop uh, the increase in profitability okay that is 10451372 okay uh, let me do a growth formula as well okay so i'll say profit growth you no need to uh, show a formula here for a growth formula okay so profit growth is what the difference between the two uh, or probably you can take uh, 1372123 divided by 1045123 okay so this if you convert it into a percentage so ideally this gives me something like 31 percent when you do the calculation or oh, sorry 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 this gives me 1.31 when we do the calculation so through which okay the growth is 31 percent okay fine so you can do the growth formulas as well uh maybe return on assets okay uh the capacity on the rides okay that is uh, because for the second part of the question that is the quality story okay uh if we can uh, see what is the percentage of hours that we have lost let me go up there and show you okay so 9000 hours 32000 hours as a percentage of the total time available how much have we lost so maybe you can do those workings as well but obviously that's for the second part of the question okay so that has to go in separately right so when you are done with the table as you can see you can obviously get some space so this is where you will have to start typing hold on there's some questions okay right uh i am uh, okay hold on yeah so the first question is from fatima how do we figure out the ratios that need to be calculated if the question doesn't mention like in the scenario okay uh, it depends on the data set provided dear okay so there are some uh, in, in this case now as you can see there's no balance sheet so i can't do data days to credit a days to things like that i have to be happy with the data given but again uh, you will have to use your intuition at that point now when we were studying no lecturer gave you uh, this is the formula to calculate the ticket price okay so but as you can see i have used the ticket price here okay average ticket price for 20x4 20x5 why do you think i did that because they said inflation is one percent so by seeing the 35 38 difference i can see if i'm in line with inflation just to let you know i am not i am much above inflation okay right so uh a few more questions let me touch on those as well okay right hold on Can someone throw a question? Just say hi in the question tab. Thank you. Right. So, uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Okay. Right. So, uh, wait. So how do we figure out the ratios? As I answered, depends on the data provided. There is no standard list for us to calculate. So based on the data, you will have to calculate the uh, ratios which can be calculated. And always, as I said, throw in one or two ratios if you can figure out at that moment connected to this question, which are not the standard ratios, okay? For example, if you're like a call center or something like that, a telephone cost ratio or something like that, so what are your telephone cost uh, uh, in comparison to the total cost or something like that? So depending on the question, okay? I'm doing part A at the moment. Yes, I'm typing on the part B section, okay? But I'm doing part A, okay? Uh, 
20x4 and 20x5, someone wants to know what is 20x4, 20x5. That's the year, by the way. So the question goes as 20x4 and 20x5, okay? Uh, how can we relate our answer to the question scenario? I haven't come to that yet, okay? I haven't come to that yet. What if we uh, just what if we just use the formula direct answer in the computation? Does it correct? Uh, Fahim, I I wouldn't advise you, okay? Uh, I wouldn't advise you to put the formula inside the paragraphs. One thing is that shows a little lack of professionalism, okay? So uh, it's it's a little ugly to put the paragraph, okay? Just to let you know, I have worked as an analyst uh, in a credit rating agency as well okay so the workings are kept separately and when you type the paragraphs okay within brackets uh, you say refer appendix or something like that so that's where i told you guys say refer working one or something like that okay right so then there's a few more question how do we know if it's a comparative or trend analysis okay uh if it's a comparative okay that depends on the question back again so if it's 12 20x4 and 20x5 it's a trend analysis it's the same company two years but if it's company x and company y then you're talking about a comparative analysis so it'll say company x here and it'll say company y here okay right so again depends on the question okay and uh how much big answer can we give this question in theory okay righto now a question like this okay that's that's a very good question okay uh to ask me right how much of it how much must you type okay so now if it's a 14 mark question i would say something like uh 40% of the 14 marks, that is 1.4, 2.8, 5.6, maybe about six marks will be allocated for the calculations, okay? So to get six marks on calculations, okay, I would say, uh, again, my rough calculation, 40% of the total marks, okay, is 5.6 marks, so roughly six marks, okay? So I'm telling you, at least put down something like 12 12 computations okay so half a mark each to be on the safe side at least a 10 so as you can see i have easily done five here and i mentioned more than another eight i think okay so we are passing that mark okay so how much must you write you must write an answer sufficient for 12 eight marks okay so if you look at the examiner's answer okay just to let you know your word document you have it with you okay so i i i have that answer with me okay if you go right on top this is the answer okay to thatcher international park so now you might ask me sir do you have to type all of this from here to here no this is just an examiner's answer okay so, but I would say for eight marks, okay, you know, the A4 sheet, we in Sri Lanka call it a CR book, the one with the single rule lines, okay. Uh, your exam answer book, just in case you have uh, handled an ACCA exam before, uh, my advice was half a sheet of one side for five to five, half to three quarter for five marks. If it's like 10 marks, one to one and a half, okay, don't go beyond that. So some word count connected to something like that is what I am looking for, okay, in terms of the answer, okay. So uh, don't waste your time trying to type too much as well, okay. We are unnecessarily uh, wasting time then from the next question that you're going to do, right. So we'll quickly move on to the questions, okay? Right. Uh, that's, I think, how much must you write? Can I use sales growth formula comparing two years? Yes, of course you can. How many ratios do we have to calculate? I think I answered that question, okay? Uh, if we have to calculate repairs, 
how can we perform that specific calculation uh, you can't compute repairs over here uh, I'll, I'll tell you about repairs in a little while don't worry about that okay how do we know how much ratio is required okay to do the mark so uh, roughly i said from the mark allocation 40 percent will go for the calculations in a question like this so if it's six marks i would say compute about 12 ratios uh, should we not calculate sales growth yes yes you should yes you should guys i'm just doing a few formulas okay to make you all understand this this is not the whole answer to the question okay we have limited time i won't be able to do like from the answer from the beginning to the end all the more reason why i have given you the answers over here right so i'll uh, move on could you please uh, do the profit growth ratio again i'm not clear okay it's like this okay uh, this profit ratio i'm using a bit of a short form guys okay so ideally it should be uh, okay if you if you want to specifically go for it okay so this should be minus one zero four five one two three yeah so there you go so the correct formula is that okay but when you do this you get a 0 0.31 but if you just say 1.31 and make it 31 percent i think uh, the examiner would understand okay so someone who wanted me a clarification from this profit ratio okay right whether we get uh, day two recorded video after tomorrow because tomorrow i can't attend okay uh, so there's a personal concern okay uh, i'm not too sure if we can uh, arrange that uh, the administrator will probably uh, let me know okay so I'll, I'll i'll give you an answer maybe okay it is important for us to show workings or can we just go ahead no it is very important okay uh, shard it's very important for you to show the workings take it seriously as I said, about 40% of the marks come from the workings. For part A of the question, can we explain about the change in ratios we used in the table or do we need to explain other points as well? You need to explain the ratios used in the table. Okay. Uh, if you are trying to explain some other calculation, then you are unnecessarily going to fall in trouble. Okay. So if you want to explain some other calculation, why not put it on the table itself? Okay. So what's the formula for sales growth? That's the last question I have. And I'm going to do the this thing. I'm going to do the answer. OK, at least go through it. Right. So uh, fine. So what's the formula for sales growth? If I'm to write it over here. OK, uh, shall I write it there? Yeah. So that is sales from 20x5 minus sales from 20x4 so divided by sales from 20x4 starting point is x4 no okay so then you multiply this by a hundred percent so basically the second year detail comes here the first year detail comes here and divided by the first year detail so this is how you compute a growth formula okay fine so that is what i did over here okay uh, to get 0 0.31 okay so let me erase this okay uh erase and let me go on to the normal mode right so right if i do not use this table and simply just calculate the ratios and then discuss each ratio under each ratio would that be acceptable half is uh, i wouldn't say that's not but then again uh, you might lose one or two marks on your professionalism because when they say assess the performance uh, it doesn't say compute the ratio and explain one by one okay yes and uh, mahek wants to know uh, are you not going to teach us on day three and day four yes i am yes i am i'm gonna teach you all four days don't worry i'm there my heck don't worry right okay fine so coming back to the answer okay so i told you compute after that comment or calculate comment and then discuss or explain tell me why it has gone up or come down 
so I'll, I'll go back to the examiner's answer now so after the formulas are done you have to start typing over here okay so you have to start typing one by one or ideally paragraph by paragraph so as you can see here okay i'm not telling you to type everything over here but then again i would like you to follow a similar format okay not necessarily have the headings okay so they are starting with sales growth okay uh, sales are up by 1.3 percent okay so we did we compute sales growth no we computed profit growth so if you do a similar formula sale for sales growth so you will get a uh, 1.3 percent over there so as you can see w1 so if i computed it over here in my table i would have probably said w4 okay that's how you are supposed to refer to it okay which is a little above the rate of inflation and uh, they are and therefore a move in the right direction however admission prices are jumping by 8.6 percent so how do they get that so just in case you you can see them over here the workings are there okay this is available for you to download i believe so that is this computation 35 has become 38 35 over 38 that is this is that same thing which i did for you guys just now huh? okay the growth formula so 8.57 percent so inflation is one percent your tickets have gone up by 8.56 percent or 8.6 percent and the number of visitors are falling there seems to be a problem large increases in the admission prices reduce the value proposition to customers it is unlikely that the rate of increase is sustainable or even justifiable indeed with volumes falling it appears that some customers are being put off on and price could be one of the reasons okay so price has gone up by eight percent in a country where inflation is only one percent so people don't like it so maybe less people are coming another reason why less people would turn up there appears to be a continuing drift away from routine maintenance and management preparing to repair equipment as required this does not appear to be saving any money as the combined cost of maintenance and repairs is higher than 20x4 is that so i think so maintenance and repairs 80 plus 260 is 340 390 so that's a bad move you are not repairing it but thinking that the cost will come down but it has gone up okay so see this is the discussion okay that i'm talking about tell them why pull out things from the question itself okay right uh what else what else can we say okay uh, director's pay, they're talking about director's pay, 6.7%, uh, much above inflation. So they are not happy with it, okay? Or at least uh, directors are definitely happy with it. But they can always argue saying they've increased the profit by 30 odd percent, okay? They can say that. So this is that 31.3 calculation that we did, okay? Right. So in terms of part B, okay? Part B. The hours lost has increased significantly, okay? Equally, the percentage of capacity loss due to breakdowns is now approaching 17.8%, okay? So the workings are done over here. The calculations appear from nowhere. So to that student who asked me, should you show every calculation? Yes, that is when the examiner will know how it got calculated. So your loss capacity has increased from 5 to 17.8, okay? this would be a high number of hours lost surely increase the risk that customers are disappointed given the fixed admission fee so you really don't want to go into a park where you pay for everything and not being able to access all rides because it's broken so this will increase the time of the queues okay so this is the comment part i'm talking to you about so based on the values you're coming up with reasons as to why it happened and what could happen over there okay fine so uh please take this comment part importantly or very seriously that's where the marks are okay so there's a little bit on safety the question asks you to list down risks okay i'll go back to the question okay where's the question sorry so uh yeah so it says assess the quality of the service okay 
and any other relevant data and indicate the risks it is likely to face. So read the question carefully. Some people would just assess the quality and probably forget about this second part, which means you're going to lose easily two to three marks if you forget to indicate the risks. So as you can see, indicate the risks very clearly. Okay, fine. So let's move on to some of the questions and after which I'll move on to the PowerPoint. Right. So uh, the audio has issues. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm doing, yeah. Yeah. Hello, your voice is not quite clear. The mic is actually very close to my mouth. Uh, is it important to write the formula? Half is yes, please do. Please tell how much the examiner will marks uh, each step in this question. Uh, it's like this. Uh, there is no There is no specific, uh, okay, uh, there, okay, in terms of the mark allocation for this particular question, okay, so uh, now, okay, let, let me go back to the answer. So this is your answer, okay. So for each element that you have discussed here, okay, depending on the discussion, you will get about two to three marks, okay. So, but you have to properly discuss it as you can see through what they have done. It doesn't necessarily mean that as I told you, don't get me wrong, you need not put everything down in this examiner's answer script. This is definitely a more than 100 mark answer. So, therefore, if majority of the points that you have included here, uh, not uh, explained to a very uh, depth uh, to uh, great to the greatest depth like this, uh, that's 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 perfectly fine. So don't worry too much about that. But a decent explanation is required. So something like this would get about three marks. Something like this would get about three marks because they are talking too much about the maintenance here. Something like this would get two marks, two marks. So two to three marks each for an explanation. Okay. So this is uh, to. Uh, this is to uh, yeah this is to uh, some uh, yeah this is to fahim yeah uh, most of the time is consumed by answering unnecessary questions can you answer the important ones i think this is an important question umar anyway fine so we are done with this let's move on to uh, the next okay yeah under each heading how much should we write uh, just uh, write uh, uh, sufficient amount, as I said, for eight marks. So as I said, uh, if you're writing on a sheet of paper, just one to one and a quarter pages, okay, that's the total amount that we are talking about. There is nothing specific saying for each heading you should write so much, so much. It's the quality which matters, not the quantity, okay? Uh, if we are solving it on the computer, then where do we have to show the workings to the examiner? So there you are these are your workings this is what you must show the examiner okay if you're solving it uh, on excel you can show it with an equal sign and the answer would appear okay we are looking into questions tomorrow don't worry so for this type of question do we calculate ratios in workings and separately discuss them by referring the workings of course half is that is what i'm advising you to do separately compute the workings and write the paragraphs over here done so we move on to our PowerPoint, right? So we discuss the examiner's report, non-financial performance indicators, right? So the financial ones done, okay? We are little more than an hour from the start. So let's move on. Financial performance appraisal often reveals the ultimate effects of operational factors, but the non-financial indicators are needed to monitor the causes. So in simple words, okay? Critical success factor, shareholder objectives are non-financial. In summary, the numbers only will not tell you everything. So you have to look at the other aspects as well. Thanks to Kaplan and Norton, they have come up with a tool called the Balance Scorecard, which talks about the four perspectives of uh, the Balance Scorecard. Right. So, and there's a question connected to Balance Scorecards. Okay. I'll come back to that. 
uh, in a little. Uh, but when we move on to the building block model, not many questions on the building block model. Fitzgerald and Moons, okay. Uh, so it's built on three blocks, as you can see, dimension, standards, and rewards, okay. Uh, I want to throw a question, okay. This is like that mini poll that I want you to do, okay. Quickly, uh, it's uh, 8.45 on my clock right now, okay. Uh, I'll give you just, uh, I'm going to give you two minutes, that's it, Bob. That's about it, okay. Uh, please answer this question and go to your chat box, okay, and uh, put down the answer, but don't hit the send button, okay, don't hit the send button. After two minutes, when I hit, tell you to hit the send button, please hit the send button. It's MCQ time, guys, from the specimen paper. One more minute. All right, hit the send button for me. I'm not getting any answer. I'm not going to read out names. Just let me know A, B, C, D. All right, super. I'm getting the answers. Thanks, guys. So there's some saying C. Some saying A, some saying B, uh, one of two people saying D as well, okay? Right, so, yeah, so ideally all four can't be the answers, so we'll stop the answering right now, okay? It has to be one. The correct answer is C, okay? So this is where you go wrong, okay? Now this is a pure test of knowledge, okay? Right. The determinants of performance are quality, innovation, resource utilization, and competitiveness, okay? Quality, innovation, resource utilization, quality, innovation, resource utilization, and competitiveness. So that's, that's a part of the dimension, all right. But then again, that's not the correct answer I will let you know why, according to Fitzgerald and Moon's building block model, okay, uh, the four determinants, okay, you will probably see this in your textbooks, okay, uh, four determinants, is quality there? Yes. Is innovation there? Yes. Is resource utilization there? Yes competitiveness is not there but flexibility should be here instead of competitiveness so your textbooks will clearly define the determinant saying these are the four determinants quality innovation resource utilization and flexibility okay standards are targets for performance should be fair achievable and controllable standards fair equity achievable there's no controllability there controllability is here so that's wrong okay why is the third one right rewards encourage staff to work towards standards which should be clear motivating and controllable clear motivating controllable that's right and the last one it's used in the service industries yes fitzgerald and moon introduced this to the service industries uh, this is the first point why students fail, lack of knowledge. Guys, I know this is a tricky piece to remember, okay? But you need to remember 
to get these two marks okay so you need to remember that the four determinants are quality innovation resource utilization and innovation and the results are competitive and financial performance so that's how these six are formed okay quickly let me look at the question there competitive flexibility is competitiveness i mean competitive performance uh no flexibility is something else see it's like this this is according to fitzgerald and moon fitzgerald has and moon has introduced flexibility as one thing competitive performance as something else so on that note if we look at this uh, when you say competitiveness okay uh, they are not looking at competitiveness competitive flexibility they are looking at uh, competitiveness itself or competitive performance which is given as a separate uh, uh, downstream results mechanism okay so guys knowledge 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 okay so you need to remember these things if you are to get this answer right so i'll go back to balance scorecard okay right important question way back from 2014 jam air there's another recent question as well as i said at the end of the session i'll probably list down a set of questions for you to go through right okay fine so coming back to this okay jam air let's me go to that question it's on your word uh, pdf file right uh, if you look at the requirement part a describe each of the four perspectives of the balance scorecard for six marks so that has nothing to do with jam air okay nothing at all so one and a half marks for each a brief discussion what is financial performance? What is uh, innovation, learning and growth? What is the internal business perspective? What is the customer perspective? So you got to explain the four uh, one by one. Okay, right. So for six marks. So this was actually an old pass paper for 15 marks. Okay, so the balance nine marks says for each perspective of the balance scorecard, identify one goal together with a corresponding performance measure which could be used by jam air to measure the company's performance the goal and measure should be specifically relevant to jam air for each pair of goals and measures explain why you have chosen them right so jam air was founded in september 2007 i'm stressing on the second part because this is theory you have to explain the theory yeah, and one of the growing number of low-cost airlines in Shania. Okay, so there's a country called Shania. Let me pick up the highlighter. It's a low-cost airline. Okay, right. It's operating on low-cost, high efficiency. And how do they do this? Operating in secondary cities. So secondary cities are cheaper. Okay, right. Using uh, one and only one type of aircraft. So that makes it uh, uh, reduces the maintenance and operational cost. The planes are leased rather than bought outright. Okay, so that's also probably cheaper. Having only one category of seat class, having no pre-allocated seats. Okay, so no in-flight entertainment. Focusing on e-commerce with customers booking uh, tickets and checking in for flights online okay right the airline was given the on-time arrival ranking of seventh best so that's not too bad seventh best by the country's aviation authority uh, that's not too bad uh, it's bad if you have eight people in the country but all 50 of the airlines so seven out of 50 is good okay uh, at least not complainable uh, fine 48 jam air flights were cancelled that's bad in 2013 compared to 35 in 2012 this increase was due to an increase in the staff absentee rate at jam air from three to four uh, 4.5 days sorry guys there's a typing error there so that has gone up from three to 4.5 the average ground turnaround time for the airlines in shania is 50 minutes 
what is ground turnaround time they say that meaning that on average planes are on the ground for cleaning refueling etc for 50 minutes you have to take that seriously everyone would like to turn back and go back to their country fast but then again if you are compromising on the fueling part the maintenance part that is the cleaning part you're gonna lose business and probably there's a bit of a risk on the flying aspect as well okay customer satisfaction surveys have shown that 85 percent of the customers are happy uh, i guess that's fine okay number of passengers carried 300,000 in 3428 flights in 2007 to 920 more than tripled flights have almost doubled in 2013 so in six years we have a super growth the overall growth of the airline has been helped by the limited route licensing policy of the Shanian government okay which has given Jamia almost monopoly status on all of its routes okay so the government is helping okay monopoly status so that means uh, if you are flying from, uh, let's say, uh, Lahore to Dubai, Jam Air is like the only flight from Lahore to Dubai. Okay. So, uh, obviously, you have business then. Okay. So, and who has helped you? The government has helped you. The government, probably you got some minister on the wrong foot. Okay. Is now going to set a change in this policy immediately. And uh, it has become more important than ever to monitor the performance effectively. Right. So I've highlighted the important bits. But then again, this will vanish because I'm going to put down the screen. Okay. Right. So let me go down. Okay. So explanation for six marks. Okay. So as you can see, the financial perspective, the customer perspective, you all have access to this. Okay. So you got to put down something for one and a half marks each. Two to three lines. Perfectly enough. So this perspective is concerned with how a company looks to its shareholders. This has nothing to do with Jan Mea. I repeated that. I'm repeating it again. How can it create value for them? Kaplan has Norton and Norton has identified three themes. So what are the three themes? Revenue growth and mix cost reduction asset utilization. That's knowledge again. This is what Kaplan and Norton says. This probably is the I know uh, study material. Customer perspective, which you need to remember, by the way, customer perspective considers how the organization appears to customers. The organization should ask itself uh, to achieve our vision. How should we appear to our customers? The customer perspective should uh, identify the customer and market segments, okay, in which business will compete. There's a strong link between customer perspective and the revenue objectives. So if customer objectives are achieved, revenue objectives should be too. So what they're indirectly trying to say is you look after the customers, nothing can go wrong with the business, okay? Customers will bring in more people and the money will come in. Okay, so they will give referrals to their friends So it's saying Jamia is good or something like that. So next time you're flying, please use Jamia So automatically the financial is going to be good So then they are going to explain about the internal perspective and the learning and growth perspective. Okay, fine I am going to stress on part B. Okay, this is again something which the examiner pointed out in this examiner's report way back in 2004. Shehan nicely remembers this. Okay. Listen very carefully. Yeah? Okay. This is where I said uh, when we started off our session today. Okay. Answer the question asked. Read the requirement carefully. Okay. For each perspective. So ideally, for example, let's say we have the perspective financial or whatever okay identify one goal so for each perspective you have to write a goal okay with a corresponding performance measure for each goal you have to write a performance measure and then which could be used by jamia to measure the company's performance yeah obviously performance measure must be used for that no 
the goals and measures should be specifically relevant to jm yeah? now don't give a general thing it has to connect to the company so something connected to flights or flight delays or queuing time or something like that don't talk about a pizza delivery here because that is another question and not an airline okay for each pair of goals and measures so we have a goal we have a measure for each pair of goals and measures explain why you have chosen them okay righto so this is the structure of your answer if you don't read the question clearly you don't get this and if you don't get this you don't get full marks simple as that so you have to say financial perspective this is the goal this is the performance measure this is why i picked it according to the examiner's report some of them wrote the perspective wrote a goal and said why forgot about a performance measure some of them wrote the perspective wrote the goal wrote the performance measure didn't say why some forgot the goal performance measure and why only so if you are writing only two out of the three requirements and you are getting only nine marks the best marks best answer will still give you only six to get nine out of nine or at least the possibility to get nine out of nine you have to answer everything no guys to answer everything you need to read the question carefully so the question the examiner specifically said i remember way back in 2014 with this question okay students hadn't read the requirement properly and if you don't read it obviously you're not going to get full marks simple as that okay i believe everyone's clear on this when you look at the answer okay which i have drafted or which i have pulled down from the examiner's answer okay i'll keep this so that you will see that i'm not uh, exaggerating or anything see he is going with uh, you need to give only one by the way so he has given a few for us to learn okay so only one so the measure the performance indicators or the perspectives mentioned that's the goal to use few planes to transport customers so how can you measure if you have used few planes the least cost per customer so using few planes the least cost comes down and why are we using this tell operating efficiency will be getting more customers will be driven by getting more customers on fewer planes this goal and measure cover the cost side of this let's look at another one to increase seat revenue so how do you measure increasing seat revenue simple seat revenue per passenger revenue per available passenger mile so this covers the first part of achieving operational efficiency by having fewer empty seats okay right i'll go to customer perspective i think that's an important one right so the goal to ensure flights are on time okay so how do you ensure the flights are on time the question itself gives me that on time arrival ranking of 7th in the country out of 50 so and the explanation can go on to say that they are currently number 7 if it becomes known that it's a reliable airline customers will likely to use it so i have to take this online on time arrival ranking seriously because if my ranking's good customers are happy and if my customers are happy it's going to increase my revenue okay fine so similarly you will have to come up with a goal and a performance measure and tell me why or tell the examiner why uh, i'll remove this okay and tell the examiner why as to why you use that goal and performance measure okay so let me quickly look at a question okay we have one hour to go okay right so what are the questions okay uh, can you please zoom the answer a bit not being able to read it uh, okay okay fine uh, next time around i'll do that sorry about it uh, but guys you have access to this i believe you can download this answer on the pin which says handouts okay fine uh, fine so that's the only answer there 
right so we move on to the powerpoint we move on to the powerpoint yeah so this is something which i said this is from your acca website itself okay uh, again connected to one of the balance scorecard questions another thing take the verb seriously that's what shahan says okay if they say list put down one two three four and uh, and list if they say explain don't put down one two three four you have to explain a little bit that's why i'm asking you to explain don't write paragraphs for list don't put bullet points for explain okay so when they say explain why the balance scorecard so this is a examiner's comments huh? comments on exam technique so this is another reason why students fail by the way okay so not knowing uh, or lack of knowledge lack of exam technique so fine from march june 2017 question 32 okay right explain why the balance scorecard approach to performance measurement is more useful to measuring performance for the people's bank than a traditional approach using financial performance measures so this is what the examiner says so this is where you go wrong if you ask me sir why are you talking about this why are you talking about going wrong so that you will know not to do this so that you pass the exam many candidates here would see the requirement and read balance scorecard more useful okay they would then list the advantages of the balance scorecard they have learned and by the way this is what majority had done while this will touch on the same points that the answer makes it is only half of the requirement we need to explain not list why the balance scorecard is specifically better than just using financial measures the verbs used in the requirement are very important an article explaining what they mean is referred to in the final section of the report this is basically the examiner's reports by the way okay so the pm exam that is performance exam is also quite time pressured time management i was talking to you about part of a good exam technique is time management much try too little as well what happens if you write too much you won't be able to finish the paper what you wrote will be perfect but then again if you are losing marks on another question what's the point while it may be tempting to spend more time on written questions then guess ot is if you run out of time i'd advise against this okay some of the ot's will be less time consuming than others this is important listen to this guys and if you don't leave enough time you cited uh, sorry and if you don't leave enough time you could miss out on these easy marks and would otherwise have scored an extra 10 minutes on section c might improve your score by 2 to 3 marks but if you do three questions uh, short ot's okay that's about 6 marks so if you have 10 minutes what they're trying to say is okay if you try to type some paragraphs okay uh unless your answer is really fluent you are not going to get too much of marks because you will spend some time reading that big question as well so what they're trying to say is if you have 10 minutes okay and uh, you have on one side like a 10 mark question to be done okay on section c and you have 10 minutes at the same time you have three objective test questions to be done what they're saying is doing the three objective test questions will be much feasible because you have the ability to score six marks if you answer that properly within 10 minutes but that 10 minute section c question it will take some time for you to read okay and at the same time if you when you are done reading when you start typing your answer you wouldn't probably type much you're not going to get more than 2 to 3 marks in simple words shehan would say don't get into this situation in the first place to begin with manage your time properly 1.8 minutes per mark so two things from this get your timing organized properly read the verb of the question seriously and answer your question according to the verb right so then we have transfer pricing 
okay transfer pricing so there are some objectives of transfer pricing that is goal congruence that is the manager and the company both trying to achieve the common objective of the organization including meeting your own objectives performance measurement measuring performance giving autonomy to the managers minimizing global tax liability so i that that's not going to come for us to record the movement of goods and services fair split between uh, sorry fair split of profit between divisions okay so these are the objectives of transfer pricing so the general rule uh, not many are comfortable with this section okay uh, just a second yeah yeah so transfer pricing marginal cost plus opportunity cost in a perfectly competitive market the transfer price is the market price if spare capacity exists transfer price is the marginal cost with production constraints transfer price is the marginal cost plus the opportunity cost here too just to let you know uh, my shehan's view on this this too is plus opportunity cost so there's nothing called marginal cost shehan's view there's only marginal cost plus opportunity cost but if spare capacity exists opportunity cost is a big zero so that's why they don't put the opportunity cost part here okay so i hope everyone got that clearly i'll repeat again there's a technique called marginal cost plus opportunity cost but if spare capacity exists the opportunity cost is always zero because as you can understand you're not sacrificing anything at all okay if you are to produce any extra units because why spare capacity exists okay right practical transfer pricing systems market price cost plus markup negotiation and uh, we have a question okay right So I'm, I'm, I'm on target. We should be able to do this. Okay. Right. Mob company. That's your question. But before Mob company. Yeah. I'm coming back to something. Okay. Listen to this guys very carefully. Lot of people. Lot of you all may find this topic called transfer pricing a little confusing. A little difficult. Okay. Uh, don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. I'll, I'll try to make it as easy as possible for you. Okay. Right. So what am I trying to say? So how are you trying to make it easy? I'll just give you some pointers. Okay. Right. All right. In terms of transfer pricing. Okay. Leaving the theoretical bits aside. I told you this can be one big question at the exam. Sometimes they combine it with ROI, RI. So they can ask you three types of questions. Okay. So one thing is. Okay. They can give you. A transfer price and ask you to compute a profit statement okay ask you to compute a profit statement so for example they say the transfer price is 25 so 25 is given So use that and compute a profit statement. Okay. They can give you a technique or give a method. And ask you to do a profit statement. Okay. So there are. They won't say transfer price is 25. They will say transfer price is cost plus 10% or variable cost plus 10%. So then I have to compute it and then do the profit statement. Right. So how do we do the profit statement? Okay. So profit statements done like this. Okay. Uh, where this is Shehan's recommendation. Okay. So you have the selling division. You have the buying division. 
and you have the total okay so you will start off with units how many units how many units how many that doesn't make sense so then you put the dollar sign selling price minus the variable cost you get the contribution contribution into number of units that's total contribution so if this is a and this is b this is a into b yeah? minus the fixed cost or the total fixed cost which will give me the profit right so you got to fill this format okay and uh, this is what they can ask you if it's the first or the second but the more popular thing that they will ask you is basically to find or ideally i'll say i'll cut that and say decide on a suitable transfer price decide on a suitable transfer price okay so just in case you want to take a screenshot of this go ahead i will be erasing it in about 10 seconds okay because i need to move into the question take a print screen go to a word document and just paste it and keep if you like so i'm gonna do that in five four three two one okay so sorry guys i can't skip this so right we move on right right so we move on to the question by the way so let's see how we can do this right so mob company mob company manufactures electronic mobility scooters the company is split into two divisions the scooter division that is division s and the motor division that is division m division m supplies electronic motors to both division s and external customers uh, the two divisions run as autonomously as possible subject to group's current policy that division m must make internal sales first before selling outside the group and division s must always buy its motors from division m However, this company policy together with the transfer price which Division M charges Division S is currently under review. Details of the two divisions are given below. Okay, so there's Division S. Uh, Division S's budget for the coming year shows that 35,000 electronic motors will be needed. An external supplier could supply these to Division S for 800 each. Division M has the capacity to produce the total of 60,000 electronic motors per year. Details of Division M's budget, which has just been prepared for the forthcoming year as follows. Sales volume is given. Selling price is given. Variable costs are given. The variable cost per unit for motors sold for Division S is 30 per unit, lower due to the cost savings on distribution and packaging. Maximum external demand for motors is 30,000 units per year. Assuming that the group's current policy could be changed, advise using suitable calculations the number of motors which Division M should supply to Division S in order to maximize group profits. Recommend, this is what I told you, recommend the transfer price. So this is a type 3 type of a question, okay, at which these internal sales should take place. Okay, right, guys uh fine so i'm gonna do uh i i hope you don't mind okay i'm having a printed sheet of this question with me okay so i'm gonna use that uh, printed sheet uh, to refer to and based on that i'm gonna draw a small answer okay so uh you have anyway access to this okay right so uh let me get that. Just give me one second. Get the question. Right. Oh, okay. Fine. So why did I say that? Because I'm going to 
you guys are going to get a bit of a uh, a clear sheet at the exam okay this is what i advise my students when it comes to transfer pricing okay uh, to take down uh, a bit of a picture on how this whole thing works okay so ideally we have a mob company okay mob has two divisions okay the company is split into a scooter and a motor division okay so the motor division makes a motor and gives it to scooter okay right so if we come into the two divisions division s that is scooter has a budget of 35000 sorry their budget for the coming year is 30000 35000 electronic motors okay uh, so 35000 what happened there wait i need 35000 motors some external fellow has said i'll give it to you for 800 dollars right division m these guys have a 60000 capacity right these guys have a 60000 capacity and then selling price for external people they are also selling it externally you follow this technique you'll never go wrong guys and they are planning to sell it outside for 850 okay and the variable cost on external sales the question says is 770 right the variable cost for motor sold to division s is 30 lower so if i am selling it over here the variable cost is 740 30 lower okay so maximum external demand is 30000 motors okay recommend a suitable transfer price okay as shehan said if you are to recommend there is no two methods there is one method which is cost plus opportunity cost so i have to go with cost plus opportunity cost so ideally look at this everyone okay the external party needs 30 s needs 35 we need 65 and but our capacity is only 60 so we have a shortfall of 5000 you can't make the whole world happy you have to give up something so ideally the external party and s s needs 35 external party needs 30 i will deduct this shortfall from both parties i'll tell you why so do you agree with me i don't have a problem in giving 25000 to the external party and i don't have a problem in giving 30000 to the internal party so to s i am going to sell 30000 to sell that 30000 am i sacrificing anything no i'm not sacrificing anything so ideally i'll go at marginal cost okay for the moment i'll write this 740 for the external party i have no problem selling 25000 and they are willing to pay 850 at market price 850 
my question is i can make 60 i give 25 there i give 30 here who should i give the other 5000 to and the question said you are supposed to do okay what's best for you okay in other words maximizing group profits right so the story is if i give it to him i am going to get a contribution of 80 dollars okay so ideally i am to maximize profit i would prefer to sell it to external parties i always sell this in my class but ideally blood is thicker than water this is a part of a same family so your preference would be to give it to s not to the external party but you call s up and say guys or brother whoever okay or sister okay uh, circumstances are such that i can make money through the sale of this 5000 from an external party i will like to give it to you can you give me that profit that i'm gonna lose okay so i will say please buy it from me this 5000 only at marginal cost plus opportunity cost which is 740 plus the 80 that the external party would give 820 okay if this figure was 830 s will say yes no problem but it is 800 now in ss point of view when someone's giving me something for 800 why should i buy it from you for 820 assuming the quality is the same and we are having that assumption by the way okay right on the other side of the story okay m is gonna tell us yeah if you can buy for 800 please go ahead and buy for 800 because i can make this 80 by selling it to the external party so ideally there's no point in selling this at 822 s because it's not worthwhile and s will not pay 820. so what's s going to do s will buy 5000 at 800 from the external party and i will be selling another 5000 over here to the external party at 850 take a screenshot just in case this exact same thing is what you will see through the answer that i have given you guys okay so i'm not going to read the answer okay this exact same thing you will have to put down in words okay in a paragraph but as you will see uh, can i raise this five four three two one I hope you guys took a screenshot. Okay. So I'm going to erase this. Okay. And uh, show you the answer which the examiner has given you. As you can see, everything we've discussed that profit lost of 80 and uh, everything else that i said is they are in the different views okay so if you could understand that uh, then we are all good okay so we have half an hour for one question plus whatever questions okay uh, anything that you need to ask connected to transfer pricing i'll just give a minute for you to throw anything throw any questions if required
So if not, we go to the last part of our day, ROI and RI, return on investment and residual income, okay? Right, so this can be another 10 marks in addition to the 10 marks that we did in terms of transfer pricing. So there are certain questions connected to ROI and RI uh, separately, separately, 20 marks on ROI, RI only, 20 marks on transfer pricing only, okay? Uh, at the same time, there are questions where half of it was transfer pricing, half of it was ROI, RI, right, fine. So before we go on to this, as I asked you to throw some questions, there seems to be a question, okay? Transfer pricing will be tested in section C. Yes, uh, Iraj, uh, it is a possibility. There is no uh, assurance, okay, that uh, it will definitely come, but it is definitely a potential question. There are MCQs as well, I must tell you that, okay? So there's section A, section, uh, mainly section A, because if it comes for section C, I don't think it will come on section B. So there are standalone MCQ questions on transfer pricing. Yeah, that's there. But yes, a big question is more popular. Okay, right. So ROI, controllable profit divided by the controllable capital employed. There's the advantages and the disadvantages. Okay, it's a relative measure. Everyone likes a percentage uh, used externally and therefore understood by the users encourages good use of the existing capital resources. It can be broken down into secondary ratios. We discussed this before. I'm referring to what? Asset turnover into the operating profit margin, okay? Right, the disadvantages, it increases at assets get older. In simple words, depreciation will automatically create an increase in the ROI, okay? So your performance is not going up, but because of depreciation, ROI goes up. May lead to dysfunctional decision making. Uh, for example, if your target's 25 and if you're currently at a 30, a 27, you will reject, although it's above target because the current 30 would drop and your bonus might come down. And different policy, accounting policies can confuse companies. So different people, sometimes one may use reducing balance, depreciation, the other may use straight line. Okay, right. So then we have the RI, uh, pre-tax controllable profit minus imputed charge for investment. So that is how do you compute that? The capital into the uh, cost of capital or the imputed interest rate or the rate of return, right. The pluses reduces the problem of rejecting projects with ROIs greater than the group uh, target, but less than the division's current ROI. Possible to use different rates of interest for different types of businesses. Cost of financing a division is bought home to divisional managers. Then uh, disadvantages of RI does not facilitate comparisons between divisions of different sizes, okay? Right, so uh, that's what the RI does, uh, ROI does, but this doesn't do that, okay? Right, so we have a question from our specimen paper from 2014. This is not the specimen paper that you see, okay? Right, so Brace Company, so that question's over here. Uh, I think it's an ideal question also because I'm gonna do this on the platform, okay? I'm gonna do this on the platform. So your platform, okay, I want you to go to this back again, or ideally, yes, something like this, and uh, go to the Excel sheet. Uh, tomorrow, I'll tell you to get the blank Excel sheet, how you're supposed to get it. So can you go to question number 31, part 31, ideally, okay? Right, so your question will appear somewhere here and the requirement will come here, okay? I'm not too bothered about this requirement. I'm bothered about getting this answer on this particular Excel sheet, right? So let's go back to our brace company is split into two divisions okay 
Uh, by the way, before that, there seems to be some questions. Okay. Uh, yeah. What type of theory related to transfer pricing can be asked? Theory, they can ask you something connected to the objectives of transfer pricing. They can probably ask you a particular technique and maybe a advantage or disadvantage of that technique. Mainly, it's a recommendation of the transfer price that they can ask you. Okay, right. Uh, turn back to the last page. I have a question regarding the ROI. Okay, sure, I'll go there. How does ROI encourage good use of capital resources? Okay, fine. I'm, I, I don't know if that's the same question. Let me let me go there. Okay, right. ROI, ROI. Yeah. So what's the question on this? Encourages the good use of existing capital resources. Okay. So ideally what they're trying to say over there is, okay, uh, if currently your target was 20 and you are on 25, this system will continue to tell you or this system will tell you to continue to do what you're doing, you will automatically hit the target. Okay. So that's what that means. And I think the question ROI increases as assets get older. Can you explain this? Okay, fine, fine. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, okay, just a quick one here. Huh? Okay, so how can uh, ROI increase as assets get older? Okay, so let's take a company. Okay, this is uh, not connected to this. All right. Okay, wait. I'll go to the platform and do. So then you're also getting used to this now. Right. So let's take a company. This is not Brace Limited, okay, or Brace Company. So there's year one, there's year two, there's year three, and there's year four, okay? So can I increase the size of this? Will it be too big? No, I guess it's still okay. Right. So there's year one, two, three, four. So we have, let's say, profit before depreciation. Right, so profit before depreciation, let me move this over here, is constant, 100, 100, 100, 100, okay? And I bought an asset, okay? So the value of that is 200, okay? So this has a useful life of four years, okay? So depreciation, is 200 divided by 4 is 50 per year. Can we agree on that? So closing net book value is 200 minus 50 or 150. Okay. So and every year there's depreciation of 50. I'm going on straight line by the way. So just to let you know that's depreciation and the net profit that is after depreciation. The use of formulas, by the way, this minus this, this is where use of this system becomes easy. Drag it, there you go. So every year I have a profit of 50. So this figure becomes the opening balance and I have a constant 50 which gets minus as depreciation every year so this is this minus this right so maybe I can drag this on and maybe I can drag this on as well right oh so this is a uh, opening book value opening net book value right so let's say for the moment my roi is the profit divided by the opening book value okay so the profit is 
50 or let me take the cell itself equals 50 divided by 200 okay so that answer i'm gonna drag sorry delete i'm gonna drag that answer undo this way and let me to make it very clear for you select that and convert it into a percentage of two decimals and as you can see my profitability never increased or decreased my performance is the same throughout four years but my roi is increasing purely due to depreciation so that's the story if i'm to explain that okay right so uh yeah so moving on okay right so i'll come back to this question which is uh the brace company question so if something like this comes up what do we do brace company is split into two divisions a and b with uh, each with their own cost and revenue streams each of them is managed by a divisional manager who has the power to uh, who has the power to make all investment decisions within the division the cost of capital for both divisions is 12 percent historically investment decisions have been made by calculating the return on investment of any opportunities and at present the return of investment of each division is 16 percent a new manager who has recently been appointed in division a has argued that using residual income uh, to make investment decisions would result in better goal congruence throughout the company so they are giving you the capital they're giving you the sales they're giving you the net profit margin by the way this box is a decimal place which hasn't appeared sorry calculate the roi calculate the ri okay quickly for six marks so i will have this question on this side somewhere here so uh, by the way this is this button i told you okay uh, if you clear it everything goes off okay so be careful don't touch it okay right so coming back to our question we have uh, the question should appear here so which is by the way this question so we have division a and division b so they're giving you capital sales and net profit okay so name this 200 to make it clearer okay so there's capital sales np margin and uh, let me calculate the net profit as well okay right so there's come division a then there's division b Capital is how much? 82.8, 40.6. Sales figures are how much? 44.6. Then there's 21.8. And the margin is how much? 28% and 33%. Right, so we have net profit this into this sales into the net profit margin so that's your net profit copy the formula control c and control v and you get that answer right so now i have the profit let's compute roi first requirement i think that's two marks so how do you compute roi look at this everyone very carefully profit over capital done so copy that formula and paste it over here. This is the beauty of our new exam platform. Okay. So select those two cells. One might say, sir, you're looking very ugly there. Yeah, so never mind. So do that. Done. That's your answer. So you got two marks. RI 
I need to go back to the question because uh, the cost of capital is 12%. I need that. Okay, right. So Ri is equal to equal to my net profit minus open brackets capital into 0 0.12 that is 12 percent okay so and that's the answer that we get so why not you copy that and paste it over here and you get the second answer done so how how fast was that in getting four marks when computing the residual income okay so if i'm to interpret this is this good that's quite good that's quite good as well plus answers are good when it comes to residual income if it's minus it's bad roi we have a bit of a problem what's the problem your target was the cost of capital is which is 12 percent but if you read the question, at the moment they are at 16. So he is happy to take this project because he is 16% will go up if he takes up this project. He is not happy to take up this project, although it's a good one. Although it's a good one. So it's 12%, but I'm getting 15. But your current rate is 16. So if he takes this up, this will drop by some percentage and he's not going to get his uh, bonus which he used to get so that's the problem with the roi as a measure that's the weakness okay so ideally okay uh, sorry about that that's what you have to do to get six marks and to get four marks comment on the results okay so i'll quickly go through this with you if a decision about whether to proceed with the investments is made based on the roi then uh, it is possible that the manager of division a will reject the proposal whereas the manager of division b will accept the proposal so this is the same thing i said this is because each division has currently 16 so what i said you just put down in words it's four marks you don't have to say too much okay but uh, so this can be a combined question something like this plus the transfer pricing question can come in as 20 together okay right so it would bring divisions overall roi down it's the same thing so but whereas what the second paragraph says is when you consider what would actually be best for the company as a whole you come to the conclusion that since both investments have a healthy return they should both be accepted hence the fact that roi had been used as a decision making tool has led to the lack of goal congruence between division a and the company as a whole this backs up what the new manager of division A is saying. If they use residual income in order to aid the decision making process, both process proposals would be accepted. So like what I told you, RI, both projects are good according to this. And that is the correct decision, by the way. So that's where our PowerPoint said dysfunctional decision making. So I am rejecting a bad project sorry i'm rejecting a good project by saying no to this but it's actually a good project so that's what the answer also mentions once again this backs up the new manager's viewpoint it is important to note however that each of the methods has numerous advantages disadvantages which we haven't considered here fine so that's fine so that's uh, question wise uh, that's what i was supposed to do let's quickly browse through uh, the rest of the PowerPoint, we have a little less than, uh, yeah, about 10 minutes left, okay? So uh, we have to look at not-for-profit organizations and uh, also uh, something to do with uh, the information systems as well, okay? Right, so there's a question over here, okay? Uh, can we solve the question in the same way like you're solving for section c questions of course you can what i did here this is a complete six marks okay so the examiner can double click and see the formula you have used 
the examiner can double click and see the formula you have used okay you can use this exact answer format and you will get the six out of six yes okay so there's one more question by the looks of it uh please tell the cbe platform okay uh so how to get access to this is it i believe okay mohammed okay so if you want to get access to the cbe platform just go to google and say uh, acca constructed response workspace okay the first search result i'll repeat acca constructed response workspace the first search result click on it and click on access constructed response workspace while this loads let me take another question So next, so what I showed you was the specimen paper, but you can have this as a blank space for you to try out the questions. So click on next a few times and they'll ask a yes. So there you go. You have your word constructed response workspace. So the question appears here. So in class, when I do this, this is uh, where I usually type, okay? And then uh, if you want the Excel, just go to a spreadsheet. So if anyone doing F8, there are some formats over there. Okay, fine. So that's how you access your constructed response workspace. Okay, fine. So I hope that answer sorted. We have a little less than 10 minutes. Let me quickly finish. Okay, performance measurement. Uh, this is for not-for-profit organizations. Uh, efficiency, effectiveness, and economy. Economy is uh, spending the money wisely, so cost effectiveness, etc. Efficiency is something like getting something like productivity, getting more out of the same input, or at the same time getting less, or or putting uh, sorry the same input and getting more, or getting the same output through a lesser level of input. Uh, effectiveness or efficiency again you call it uh, uh, doing things right effectiveness on the other hand is doing the right thing okay so therefore effectiveness is the more important thing so these are the three measures that we use to measure performance in not-for-profit organizations okay so a quick one from the specimen paper it's MCQ time again, okay? So just one minute since time's running out, I have two more MCQs, okay? So can you quickly read this and put down the answer, okay? And when I tell you to hit the send button, please hit the send button. Yeah, time's running out, so can we hit the send button a bit? D is what I see, there's a A, there's a C, majority are coming with D, D is the correct answer, okay? Right, thanks guys for answering, okay? And there's another question, can you let us know what you're going to teach tomorrow? So we can revise those topics, okay? Tomorrow it's budgeting and control, that is, uh, flexible budgets to theoretical aspects of budgeting, learning curves, and also learning curves, of course, I'm pushing it to the third day, which uh, is combined with another question. I'll discuss the theory of learning curves tomorrow. And also all forms of variances, mix to yield, mix to quantity, sales mix quantity, material mix yield, planning and operational variances, market share, market size, that's the plan, okay? So the last section of uh, performance is uh, the information systems part. Very familiar triangle, strategic planning right on top, okay? 
so what do they do information uh, is predominantly environmental uh, imprecise is long term forecast main output targets and plans ad hoc control systems so then management control the middle tier information is concerned with uh, uh, information is concerned with efficiency and effective use of resources information is financial uh, in financial and volume terms may involve responsibility centers and include measures of productivity budgeting performance labor capacity utilization etc and operational control okay short term control very detailed okay and uh, so this is basically to the lower level managers you have to be very precise okay right system design a uh, few aspects on system design the main aspects okay you would look at planning uh, organizational structure is it open system closed system the contingency theories that in, in terms of the backup plans who's responsible for what the behavioral implications the different styles of management okay different people take different approaches reward schemes using methods controls most importantly i haven't thrown a slide over here one of the main things that they ask when it comes to exams in terms of this topic called information systems which is mainly a mcq area this is based on past exams that we see okay is uh, what is an erp what is a eis what is a tps what is an mis uh, what is a dss and so on okay so quickly two questions something like this is what we are most uh, familiar with uh, when it comes to exams okay so can you throw in an answer to this quickly uh, there's a question on uh, uh, which section can this triangle be tested so as i said uh, this is more on lines of mcqs okay mainly if it comes as section c then uh, we are talking about uh, basically a small piece to write okay uh, umar says uh, thanks to me and the sessions helpful okay much appreciated woman glad glad it was useful umar so then i'm getting the answer send it across okay uh, majority are going with d okay uh, some on a and c i'm sorry d is the correct answer okay uh, all four answers are correct okay and uh, question number next one okay last one okay that's of course quite easy okay uh, again from it's mcq time again from the specimen paper the following are all types of cost associated with management information okay right uh, erp someone wants to know that is a enterprise resource planning system uh, while you look at this answer i'll explain it to umar ERP is an ER, enterprise resource planning system, Umar. That is where it's an information system which connects all aspects of the uh, organization from accounting to finance to production to, okay? So it's like a big expensive system. Not many companies have it, okay? So what's the answer to this question? The following are all types of cost, barcoding and scanners payroll departments processing of personal costs completion of timesheets by employees input of data into the production system yeah so i'm getting an answer uh, which is d d b and again d okay uh, answer is actually i haven't got the correct answer it's a okay uh second one payroll departments processing of personal cost uh they're asking which of the above are direct data capture cost okay so i cannot i am capturing data directly from barcodes and scanners and from timesheets yes payroll departments processing of personal cost is nothing to do with direct data capture 
an input of data into a production system that's also not direct data capture so this is like you holding the barcode reader to scan something and get the information okay so a is your correct answer okay fine a is your correct answer thanks guys for answering okay uh, i'm gonna put down my email address so ideally next slide says do you have any questions okay uh, time's up but i'm gonna throw my email address okay i'll try to answer as much as i can uh, in terms of uh, whatever questions that you're sending okay uh, get it uh, noted down properly please okay wait i'll put it on this we're almost finished doing this okay so it's it's poolabstreety at gmail.com okay uh, it is a working email address it might sound a little funny but it's perfectly fine get the spelling properly please okay so i'm having it over here so that you can see it okay so thanks guys for participating today okay uh yeah tomorrow's video is at the same time yeah can we ask questions to your email yes you can okay i will definitely reply when time permits okay uh seda thank you you're most welcome seda and if we solve answers in excel and submit to you can you check and help us please yes mozamil i can do that okay yes i know it's a nice email okay uh thanks guys you're most welcome to everyone messaging us thank you uh yes thanks again yeah you're welcome you're welcome Muzamil. Mahek, you're welcome i'll uh, see you guys tomorrow as i said i gave you the topics and uh, we will discuss and we'll go according to plan okay uh thanks amanda thanks wish me from sri lanka uh Thanks, Fatima. Thanks, Hasib. Yep. Okay. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care.